This podcast is brought to you by Primary Arms. Primary Arms seeks to provide the best shopping experience for everything firearms. With over 13,000 products from over 400 top brands, Primary Arms carries a complete selection of rifles, handguns, firearms parts, shooting gear, apparel, and more. Every order comes with a commitment to superior service, backed by fast shipping and an expert support team. Primary Arms, serving freedom since 2008. Find out more at frn.deals slash PA. Welcome to the AR-15 Podcast. This show is for you if you just bought your first rifle, or if you've been building them for years. There is something we can all do to take our black rifles to the next level. My name is Nick Dooley, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Garth Over. Hey, guys. How we doing tonight? And tonight, we are joined by two very special guests from uh, a company that I know all of you have heard from, or heard of, probably a 99% bought something from, uh, probably paid the light bill there at least once over the course of there being a thing, if you're in my case. And uh, that is, we're talking to Cameron and Josiah from Palmetto State Armory. Thanks for having Thanks us. For having, yeah, thank you. Yep. It's, uh, so this is one of those where I, I mean, that's a company that really in the AR space doesn't need any introduction or probably shouldn't because, well, I, I'm not sure how many PSA kits or parts I have, you know, around. But, I don't know how many internet searches I've done where I type P and then it pops up Palmetto State Armory. So <laughs> I'm not going to keep it typed in anymore, man. It just knows. Yeah. It knows. Listen, I like I like to pull out my phone and like go to Safari and the first thing that pops up is PSA every single time. I'm like, God, God no, that's not what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Exactly. Well, it's uh, they're so prolific that my 11-year-old daughter built her first rifle on a PSA kit in uh, January. So That's awesome. It's, yeah. Very cool. They're, they're a thing around here. But, uh, um, so, uh, well, guys, before we jump too much into the main topic, Garth, uh, did you get to do anything cool in the last? You know, I actually have not got to do a whole lot gun related. I've been too busy farming and stuff to, uh, you know, jump into the whole swing of guns. I haven't got to buy a gun of the month yet. So that's a bummer there. And I'm, yeah. I'm doing a, a gun of the month club. It's just me, just buying a gun. <laughs> but... Oh, and he roboted out on us. He... <laughs> Sorry about there that. There he is. My buddy keeps calling me, and he doesn't realize I'm podcasting. I'm going to uh, freak out on him. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, I, uh, well, I, I got to have another range day last Friday. We took the trigger interactive system out and demoed it to three different law enforcement agencies. And uh, we were doing that. And in the process, I, uh, so it, it, it leads in rather nicely to the, uh, to the guests we have tonight. I had some uh, time to take out and actually show three different agencies, the uh, Jackal that I have here and they all got a little range time with it. And I think I'm up to, we've put about uh, 500 rounds through that one so far. And uh, even got a chance to run it suppressed for a little bit. And Good. that was what we had. A, we had a failure to feed or well, a failure, but that was because I did not turn the gas block to settings for suppressed. Yeah, <laughs> the suppressor we put on it was it was freaking hilarious. So. Yes, I I I put a a meme can on it as well. It's a uh, eleven and a half inch three or thirty cal magnum rated suppressor. Whoa, that's a big boy. <laughs> yeah, so that on a ten inch barrel. I mean, it it was quiet. Yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> <laughs> You also probably couldn't throw it more than like ten feet too. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it everything worked out well, but it was more of a. Where did you find this? It's it's, it's a it's a random shop can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask questions. Nobody wants the answers. To. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, oh, Garth, it looks like 
somebody wants uh, some help from you talking to. Yeah, well, send uh, send Garth your number, and uh, he'll do his best. Oh, I, I work magic things. I mean, it'll probably be banning from listening to the show, but one hundred percent. Actually, I you know who I talked to today. I uh, saw our good buddy, the sheriff from Potter County. Oh yeah. Strolling through my neighborhood, and I called him up and asked him what he was doing here. He just had some business to take care of in Pier. But I said, hey, man, we're going to have PSA on tonight. You should totally check us out. And he goes, I can't listen to your show anymore. I said, why not? He goes, I don't have the funds to keep <laughs> listening to your show. <laughs> so I had to take a break. And I said, well, that's, that's sad. But I get it. So if you're listening tonight, Kurt, you definitely check out the Jackal. So, yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yep. So uh, before we get too far off into the weeds, I – I know that I have read some of the, the histories of Palmetto State Armory, and I remember ordering from them, you know, like 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there, there was a bad rap for a little while with some shipping times when the company was growing faster than anyone probably ever expected. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is, uh, for anyone who doesn't know or all they've heard about is, you know, internet, Reddit, uh, just as good type stuff. What, uh, what, what is Palmetto State Armory? We kind of go a brief history of PSA where we started to where we are today. It started, Palmetto State Armory was just a, uh, it was in my brother's garage, it's a four-car garage. We had a uh, uh, mag pull P mags, checkmate industry mags, black dog machine mags, and lancers. And we uh, about a few months in got some magazines, started doing some gun shows, got a little website up, and uh, and slowly just uh, over the next eight to twelve months it increased the catalog. And uh, um, and then Obama got elected, and uh, not to get too much of politics, but that thing sprung up from there, and you couldn't keep anything in stock, and. Uh, um, one thing led to another, and then two years in, uh, we were able to buy a 40,000 square foot building. So our first warehouse. And uh, and in the process of that, uh, we were buying through Defense Solutions Group, our Magpul PMAGs. And by accident, they sent us a, uh, a box that was supposed to be PMAGs, but instead they sent us, I believe it was buffer tubes. And uh, through that, my brother looked at these. He's like, I know what these are. He's like, and that sparked the thought and said, why don't we make our own ARs? So we had an FFL to manufacture ammunition. That was one of the original thoughts of the company was we were going to get started possibly by manufacturing ammunition. That never came to fruition. It was cheaper to buy other people's and sell it. Uh, so we, at, through that uh, misshipment of buffer tubes, we ended up start making, uh, making our own ARs and we were horizontally integrated. And through each of those political cycles, it got frustrating because trying to source out barrels, trying to source out lowers, uh, people to make them for you. Brother got real frustrated with that. So into the modern day of what we're doing now, we're virtually completely in, vertically integrated. Um, we're, we've got almost a thousand CNC machines. Um, we're, we own companies from Minnesota down to Florida, out to Alabama. Um, we're, we're making our own barrels. We're making our own lowers from forge to finish. Uh, to, from forging to the anodizing, and uh, so we don't run into those supply chain issues, and uh, and that vertical integration it really allows us to to people wonder they're like, well, ah, PSA is affordable, but some people say, ah, PSA is cheap junk. Well, no, that it's affordable because we own every process from the beginning till the end, and it's very comparable to products that are twice as expensive, and it allows us to spread freedom a lot easier by providing uh, products to uh, the affordable, affordable products to uh, uh, to law abiding, responsible Americans at very good prices. Matt, that's, that's the American dream right there. That's, I found a buffer tube. Let's build ARs for the entire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's, yeah. It's, it's Bob Rossing a whole company. It's oh, just a happy yeah. little accident. <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen, if you only knew every day. No, but I, I, I mean, like, but kind of like to touch base on Josiah, like even like during COVID, right? Like it was like, you know, we we're making a lot of our own stuff then, but we we're using like an outside service to do our anodizing. 
And so like then it was just like a mad rush on firearms, you know, and we're like trying to produce and trying to produce. Well, when you're sending it out to an anodizing service, it's hard, right? Because you're at the mercy of them. So at that point, we're like, well, screw it. Let's just put it in an anodizing line. And that's what we did. You know, like there's an entire anodizing line built in right before the assemblies line that, you know, the parts, you know, come, they go right there. They get anodized. They come right out to the floor and we built them. Yeah. It's a beautiful it's, thing. And that's awesome. One of the other things that uh, I like, actually, it's probably my favorite thing that uh, Palmetto State Armory has done. And uh, it's not my competition. It, AR upper that I've used for, you know, three or four years, but, uh, is there's a, there's a term that gets thrown around a lot in, uh, in the gun community, but specifically in the, uh, like when you get into the legality and some of the fight for rights, there is something that came up from a court case and it's a relatively obscure court case but it has to do with common use saying that, Oh, all of these things, if they're not in common use, then it's not protected because it's a, it's a you know, random one-off that nobody has. Mm-hmm. They can never say that now. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Common use is something that you guys have definitely pushed through. And, uh, that is amazing. And, you know, great to me. So, yeah, I mean, that's what we do. We take it, we take it seriously every day too. I mean, that's Mm -hmm. like a serious thing that we do. I mean, we have a sign in the shop that says we build freedom. So that's Mm -hmm. what we do. Yeah. That's what we like, what we like to call that common use of spreading freedom to responsible law abiding citizens. That's what we do. Yep. And uh, that is great. And I know that, uh, we could start going down the rabbit hole that is some of the lines that you guys have because I know you just released the saber line, mm. <clears throat> and yeah. uh, we got, we got to play with those or handle those at shot a little bit, and uh, so that was what, exciting. Well, what'd you what'd you think? You're talking to the guy behind it. What'd you think? <laughs> I I liked it. Um, good. It's it's one of those where I know that a lot of people have started to become kind of oh, it's a another AR with M lock, you know, mm-hmm. kind of it makes it hard to stand out from the crowd. Yep. And some of the details I really appreciated, you know, like the staking of the castle nut, you know, like a lot of that type of stuff. It Mm -hmm. was, it was smaller things, but those are the things that I noted because it is like, that is a hundred percent, a duty, you know, service grade weapon. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, the thought behind it, you know, not to get off on a tangent on it, but, you know, it's passionate of mine. So, but the thought behind it was, is, you know, to give the customer an affordable firearm for under a thousand dollars. Right. And we, we make five or six hundred dollars ARs all day long. Right. But then you have all the people out there like, oh, well, it doesn't have this. It doesn't have that. It, they're using this part, not this part, not that. Right. And so they're like, oh, we have to buy this gun for fifteen hundred dollars because it has X, Y and Z on it. Right. So I said, OK, I hear you. Well, we're going to do it, but we're going to show you that we could still make it affordable. And so that's kind of like what it happened. And that, and like, you know, in 2023, I feel like some of these firearms, you know, companies and 2023 is going to be a tough year for the firearm industry. If you're not pushing the envelope, changing things, doing something different. Like you said, everyone makes an AR-15. So what stands out about your AR-15s? Okay. Well, you could have the, the cheap, cheap, like affordable, everyone can own one or different. And so, you know, I wanted to do like 13, seven pin and welds, 14, five. Well, it's like, you know, I'm watching all social media. People are buying guns and barrels and then sending them off to get pin and welded to get their suppressor mount on it. I'm like, well, why don't we just offer it from the shop? So that way the customers can buy it. So now we have Silencer Co. ASR, pin and weld, dead air chemo pin and weld, Surefire pin and welds. I mean, AAC pin and welds. I mean, there's everything you can get right from the factory. So you don't have to worry about sending it off to somebody else. You just buy it and take it out of the box and start shooting. And so, you know, we just wanted to kind of, give the customer and the consumer the best value for under a thousand bucks. But, you know, obviously you can't put that into a package that's $500. And so we had to, you know, raise the price a little bit, but we also, you know, feel like the features we added and the idea behind it really helps drive home what you're getting to the consumer. Very much so. And it's, you know, like you talked about with the, uh, the integrated muzzle devices on some of those shorter barrels and things of that nature. 
I'm not going to go down my crazy rants about barrel harmonics and barrel lengths and gas systems and stuff like that because you know, like I've, I've played with a bunch of that stuff and I'm like there is an optimal size and setting yeah but, uh, especially with a can yep but we're not going to do that tonight yeah yeah that's that's a whole nother rabbit hole yeah that's he will. just wait <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yep. And J- Jim brought up one thing. I remember this from like four years ago, the PSA clone, mm. but you know, the, mo- the money for that, I am proud to say, uh, who knows, maybe someday way, way far down the road that'll happen. But, uh, the money for that went to, uh, into AAC ammunition that all the engineering, the, it would have been a feat for us to pull off a hundred percent American made MP5 clone on, you know, an affordable one for that price point that we were putting out there a thousand dollars that we were looking at doing. Uh, so all that went to the AAC ammunition, which has been a tremendous success. I mean, we're just coming out with 45 ACP. We got nine, 300 blackout, five, five, six, all kinds of five, seven. So no. that's where that, a lot of people ask, but that's where that money went to. Yep. Now, now AAC, there is something very in, like super impressive to me about that. You guys are manufacturing your own primers. We are almost there. The building is up. I was like, I, uh, I, they, I, they are, I, they're working on it right now. Yeah. As uh, if you're listening to this and don't understand how huge of a deal that is, part of the the reason for a lot of the you know, ammo shortages 2020 and beyond was purely due to primers. Yep. There, there was a chemical factory that burned down in 2019 that made like an obscure chemical, but it was like 50% of the world's supply. And the only reason why I heard about it was a small time ammo company who goes, I'm here to buy every primer at SHOT Show. Mm-hmm. And that was before everything went crazy. <laughs> and I should have really taken his advice and bought nine millimeter for 19 cents a round and like taken another yeah. board in my house and yeah. just yeah, put it in my full. Yeah. But I didn't. And now I'm really into like, oh, you guys are producing your own. This is this is a big deal. <laughs> and and it's really cool to see too. We we've been doing a lot of tours of PSA, even uh, you know, so we're starting, we've been manufacturing the actual the bullet itself. I mean, just what, taking, they look like uh, bars of gold, but they're actually bars of lead. Taking that lead, and then you've got just coils of copper, and those coils of copper and those bars of lead go to form, you know, through these amazing, these multi million dollar machines actually form the projectile. And it's a, a beautiful process to watch it go through the, the brass. The casing that and now I'm going to be the primer, so it's really cool to watch. Yep, and I can watch a, a lot of those like how it's made videos or something for, <laughs> for hours. Yeah, <laughs> because yep. you know, it's, for so, I think that's just like one of those in, intrinsic things. Where it's like, okay, this is neat, <laughs> but automation is cool. Yeah, yep. it helps. It's efficient too. Yep. So. We we started to go down some of that stuff, and I know that uh, the 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 reason why I originally asked you guys to come on is to talk about you know these guys. But I know you just released the uh, the full size or rifle variant of with a pinned and welded, but that is the uh, the jackal. Yep. And I remember handling one of these for the first time at Shot Show. And it was before we would ever even really thought about doing the, or being goaded into taking on a podcast or anything like that. And I was going, man, this is really cool. And I think there's maybe one other company that tried to do a long stroke piston on an AR, but they didn't work well. Yeah, I mean, the the whole point of like doing the jackal, like, and the reason why I took a little bit longer, just to kind of give a backstory on it, is because the the whole point of it was to do it on an AR fifteen lower, right? And that goes into the whole common use thing again. 
We have a lot of people out there and you know out there with regular standard AR15 lowers. So we wanted to do the jackal that sat on top of a standard AR15 lower. And so to do that took a little bit of challenges, you know, to work through and get that rolling. But I mean, as you can see, I mean, you were talking about it earlier. I mean, it's a fun gun to shoot. Well, it, it is. <laughs> and uh, so long stroke piston, if anybody who again doesn't realize this, it's 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 like an AK operating system. Yep. It's it depends upon uh you know which type of gun guy they are when you look at it. They're like, oh, this looks like an AK. Half of my military buddies have never played with an AK, but you pop it open and they go, that's a 240 bolt. <laughs> and, and you go, yep, more or less. You know, it's, it's, there's, yeah, there's similar. Some, there's some similarities here, but, uh, um, yeah, so, we, we always, we always joke with the engineer who was working on it. We're like, Hey man, like I want to learn something, come help build AKs. We'll teach you how to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> but so the one thing I'll say is it's, this is a, an exceptionally accurate little platform as well. So I, when I zeroed it, you know, just running a, an MRO red dot on it, I was getting dime size groups when I was zeroing it. And I'm happy with, with that because it's really all I can ask out of something that sized. Yeah. And then as long as I keep doing my part, it keeps staying accurate. Like I said, we had six guys from three different departments running it through and actually doing some running and gunning with it. And they all loved it. We actually had it running head to head against an LMT. The nice. same, same size short stroke piston upper. And we were, we were running them head to head and, uh, the cycling times are actually a little bit better. There you go. Good. That's go. good to hear. That's good to hear. Yep. So I, I'm not going to just try and fangirl over it because it's when you, I mean, you can, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can, I can, I can keep going on it. But when you went through, it was, what was the thought process behind bringing something like this to market? Aside from just, it's a piston driven upper for an AR. Because it probably would have been way easier to do a short stroke piston with an with an op rod. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the idea was is obviously compactness, but we also wanted durability, right? So, like, you know, we make a ton of AKs a day. And so we, you know, the, the you know, Jamin and Josiah's brothers like really loves AK. So he wanted to kind of do a balance between both of them, right? And that's kind of the concept of what you're seeing in that. Um, even like down to like the recoil assembly is very similar to how an AK is and how it locks in and, and all that when you put it together. And so there's a lot of characteristics there, but it was more like, you know, wanting to be compact, monolithic, you know, all one thing, versatile on an AR-15 lower. So if someone has it at the house, they can just buy the upper, put it on their lower, put whatever on the back of it, no buffer tube needed. It's a good, you know keeping your bag type of a firearm, you know, at the compact as it is. Um, and then, you know, obviously having a rifle length version of it now, I mean, that thing shoots so flat, it's ridiculous. I mean, you really got to get your hands on a 1371. It's, it shoots so flat. Um, I mean, you could stand there. I mean, we, a, um, a skeletized buffer tube on the back of it and threw like a Magpul SL stock on it. And it literally felt like I was shooting an MP5. Like hmm. it literally felt like I was shooting an MP5. Like there was nothing. And then you throw a can on the front of it. It was, it's such a flat shooting. It doesn't even move. Like you just stand there and you just keep going. There's very little recoil. Um, you know, uh, Matt, the, the engineer over the Jackal, he did a really great job on, on some of this stuff. Um, and you could see like, it's cool to see when you come out with a firearm and you see other companies start making accessories for it. Right. And mm -hmm. so that's when you, that's when you know that yep. you, you know, not that you made it, but like, that's when you know that it, it's a, it's a great product. People like it is when other companies make an aftermarket accessories for, to fit your firearm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. So, that, that, right. I mean, uh, the test we did the first day we uh, received the gun, man, I, I couldn't, I was blown away by just the, amount there was no recoil i mean it was fantastic and that, that was the same day the rifles had dropped and i went man I, if this is how the pistol shoot man I, I can't wait for the rifle and he goes well it'll be known to yourself but uh it's out right now damn it so no. yeah <laughs> yeah no it, it, it's awesome yeah i mean and they they you know they did uh slightly you know the, the rifle's a little different as far as the way it 
I wouldn't say operate, but we added like almost like a little bit of an AK gas tube in there. And so what it helps is it helps deflect the gas. So if you're shooting it suppressed, especially on the 300 blackout, it kind of diverts the gas down um, and, and kind of rearward where that gas tube just helps kind of dissipate it out. And it, it just makes such a difference. It's awesome. Yeah. Um. So the there's three calibers that I'm aware of you guys are producing it in. That's 5.56. Five, 300 blackout and 762 by 39 or is that one uh, not out yet it's not out yet the only one we have out right now is 556 and 300 blackout so um but there will be a whole jackal family so you know it, it's it's there's going to be nine mil variants that's based off of our arv platform um which we had we had we had some of these at shot show um yeah. but there's a, there's going to be a nine millimeter that's going to be a base off of our arv platform so it's going to take our akv cz scorpion style pattern bag um and then we'll have a, a ks47 one that is a 7.62 by 39 but it's going to be based off of our ks47 lower so it's going to have like a standard ak mag it's not going to be those goofy ar47 style mags it's going to be a standard ak style mag um yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. I mean, I think there's going to be some other kind of unique stuff coming with that, but, I mean, nothing, like, hard yet. Man, I mean, we're talking about safe just for the Jackal family. Yeah, yep. I mean, we're talking about doing, like, 545 versions of it, like, AK556 style versions of it, you know, things like that. There's the 9mm and the 7.62x39. If you didn't see it, Shot Show, there was a little sticker on there. Those right now are just in concept phase. So, uh, for those listening... Um, they won't be out anytime soon, but they are, uh, in the works. Yeah. Yep. That's, I just remember, uh, when we went over and looked at them because I was like, okay, I got to get my hands on one of, one of these. And then there was other things that are just in development that everyone saw because everyone was obsessed with the stream Gewehr and, you know, <laughs> all those things. But I looked up and I was like, wait, that's not an AK. And everyone was, was like, what do you mean? I'm like, it's got it's naked. No, that's a KS forty seven lower. I, I know what that is. <laughs> I, one of these things is not like the other. Yes, something <laughs> is sticking out here. <laughs> no, we so did I, secret. We did secretly like right next to the AKs at Shot Show though, so it was kind of like right there, you know. Yep. But I I saw that it was it was right after I got uh, some of the coffee, and I went. So I was looking around, I'm like, wait, no, this is this is incorrect. Because you guys are even <laughs> coffee now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Caliber coffee. Yep. From a company that actually loves guns. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And we've got another sister company, Right to Bear, as well. It's a, uh, basically, it's a, a form of insurance. Um, there's other companies out there that are providing it, but uh, it's coming from a hardcore 2A backed company um for uh concealed carry or just firearm insurance as like they like to call it so got a lot a lot of different uh things going on in the background oh yeah and and that's that's awesome to see you guys diversifying like you are so one of the other things that i've talked about you know and as we we just talked about you know it's like oh they had a strum you know and the the jackal and the saber line uh mm -hmm we've talked a lot in the past about like innovation and where the AR platform is headed because there comes a point where everybody kind of does this, you know, just like we said, Oh, you know, it's, it's another, you know, yep. another, another 16 inch M lock AR, you know, where yep. are we going to next? So I've seen a lot of things from, you know, PSA over the years where you're actually pushing innovation and driving things and still keeping them affordable. So when you talk about the Jackal family and things moving forward, is there other, you know, really neat stuff that's coming? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, there's, there's a ton of cool stuff coming. I mean, obviously, you know, we announced a lot at SHOT Show. So this was the first year I think that we did a really good job keeping like what we were working on under wraps, you know, last, you know, in the past years we would like tease what we have going on show it be like on social media before shot show to create some buzz this year we like kept a lot under wraps like the stg 44 no one had any idea that was there and then we opened the doors and people were like what is that 
And uh, same thing with like the Sabre line and our AK 300 blackout stuff that we're doing. And so, I mean, we got a lot of cool stuff coming, but even like the, the H and R line, right. The, the, yep. the retro line, like we got a lot of cool retro builds come in. Um, I mean, those are going to continuously to expand the catalog on that. Um, trying to tool up enough and make enough parts because we keep getting asked every day it's like when are we going to be able to buy some you know some some uppers by themselves and parts by themselves so we can build you know i you know i got a kid or whatever at home i want to finish and we need this or we need that so we're working on that right now that's tough because we're selling out every day almost of of what we put in and what we can produce um but those those guns like the guy you know mike wetland is the is the guy who's running hnr he's former nodak spud and uh so he came on board and he does a really, really great job of doing that stuff too. So, I mean, we got a lot of cool stuff coming on the retro line. Yep. And, uh, as that, I see Tyler joined us now. So sorry for the delay. I was doing a AR 15 build class with, which I'm hoping is an excusable offense on the AR 15 podcast. <laughs> I will give you a pass this one. Time <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, uh, we we will allow it this once. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so. Great American. You're out. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Voted yeah. off the island. It's not the yeah. first yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. So uh Tyler missed uh you know the first half of the show tonight, but uh I was talking about you got to shoot uh the jackal for the first time this last weekend. I did. I did. I was really impressed with the recoil impulse. That was um yeah, that was the big thing that I was looking for, just to kind of feel like what that long stroke gas piston was going to feel like. And I, I, I enjoyed yep. it. I, I compared it to uh, one of my piston guns, and um, it was just as smooth, probably even a little bit better. So, and I've not shot a lot of gas pistons. So that was, that was really cool that I actually uh, was able to shoot one in an AR 15 platform. Yeah. No, well, appreciate the kind words. No, I was just telling these guys before you came on, the 13.7 is even smoother. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Who were you rocking? The 10 and a half, Dooley? Yes. Yes. Yeah, the, that 13.7 pin and weld, it's got a little bit of a longer gas system on it. So it's just, it's lights out. It doesn't move. Yeah, I thought it was a really great price point. Uh, I think right around $1,300 MSRP, I saw. Yeah. Um, yeah. That for, you know, and, and it's got a, a, had a really cool skeletonized stock on it. Yep. Um, I, I think that is a great affordable gun that offers a lot of really interesting features. Um, do you see a lot of guys using it with three gun then, or what's, what's the main market that people are putting? It yeah, there? I think so. I mean, I also think like looking badass is cool too. You yep. know I mean? I think people like, you know, aesthetically like the way it looks, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, uh, that and, you know, compactness, it's still a little bit more compact with now having a buffer tube on the back, being able to fold it, you know, um, it's not crazy weight either. I mean, yeah, it does weigh a little bit more than normal, but it's not that bad. But yeah, I mean, I think I think people will adopt it, especially in that market. But I think um, I think people that want something different. You yeah. know, I mean, like we were just talking about like 2023, like if you're not in the firearms industry, like pushing the envelope and trying to do unique things or give the customer a unique offering, I don't think you're, you know, I think you're going to have a tough year. And so I think having an option like the 13.7 Jackal, um, it, you know, is going to be a, a big deal for us. And, you know, we, we have we have a couple more variants coming too. Um, of that 13.7 Jackal. So we'll have different stock options on it. You know, I mean, we put one uh, like a skeletonized buffer tube that folds on it yesterday and put like a Magpul SL stock and it still like locks folded and everything. And so it's really like comfortable to shoot when you do that too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, I mean, that 1913 rail on the rear, that's yep. really where the yep. market's going. And I, I'm a huge fan of it. <laughs> I'm telling you, looking cool is half the battle. If the gun doesn't look cool, it won't sell. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> that's 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 a hundred percent because we all know we really just do it for the gram. That's oh, what yeah. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's a vibe. <laughs> yep. And I'm uh, on your guys' website right now, and I actually see one that's not out of stock, and I'm really tempted just to add that to cart. So, what is it yeah, the black you got one? your gun. You got you got your. Uh, I don't know if Garth told you guys, but he does a gun per month. Club. Yeah, I already bought one this month. 
cost me an arm and a leg. So this one only cost me a leg. So six more days, and it's a new month, my friend. Yeah. I know, I know. And in six days, I'm gonna buy or I'm gonna add to cart, and I'm gonna send it to Nick. So <laughs> well, well, we we got some uh, we got some cool. I mean, we have FDE I think coming in tomorrow, coming in stock tomorrow, and then we'll have you know OD Green will be a few days away, and then oh. we have like a. We also have like a smoke color, which is like a, a mix between like a gray and a green. So it's it's like a darker color and that, that looks sick too. Oh wait, okay. Yeah, I like, I, I love a black gun, don't get me wrong, but man, it's it's cool to mix it up with the colors. Yep, absolutely. I mean, I'm all about that 50 shades of FDE. Yeah. <laughs> and like, as, I as the- I, the can't, I can't get away from it. I can't help it. <laughs> as, it's as like an addiction. One, the one host who d- does not and has not owned a scar. Um, yeah, I don't know if I could say that. You want? And I one? never and I never understood that. Like I'd read some of the online forums about people. You know, like the scar had a, you know, different colored FD lower. The upper was kind of like a goldish, and then the UGG boot was just whatever. You know, yeah. Sherwin Williams color UGG boots are. But uh, I liked the whole point of of. To me, it's it's meant to be a little bit more camouflage, so it breaks it up more. I like I don't care if my FDE versus my coyote doesn't match. I think that adds to it. Yeah, I mean it's it's, it's also a part of the, like the material and the strain of the structure. Yep. Uh, especially like when you anodize it. Mm-hmm. So like that that also will give you a different shade. And that's why we're doing Cerakote because we have a lot mm-hmm. of people who are like, oh well, this doesn't match, so we just Cerakote it all, and it'll oh, really? be like. It'll, it'll be easier for us yep. if we just paint it off <laughs> at one time. <laughs> yep. No, that uh, that does make total sense. And there's there's two other things that uh, might not be ARs, but we would be remiss if we did not talk about them. And your handguns. Hmm. Because there was already a comment up here about, like, why no 5.7? You know? And because uh, everyone yeah. wants everything in five seven or ten millimeter, mm. I think they're more talking about the the jackal. Oh, 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 oh. and <clears throat> everybody wants everything in five seven and ten millimeter because ten millimeter is best millimeter. But <laughs> in in pushing through the rest of that, you know, the rock five seven and the dagger, the dagger kind of took the world by storm. Mm. Oh, it did. and. I I have talked to a couple people who like they were going to buy their their first handgun, and it was while I was on you know my last deployment here, I w- was talking to some friends of ours. And was, well, you know, it's my wife. Or, you know, the wife thinks that we should get a handgun, and I told her I was like, well, I'd like to get some of my rifles back too. So he's like, where well, where can I get you know a deal? And I was like. I'm going to send you a link. Just do this so you can get your rifle and your handgun at the same time. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. It, yep. It was, That's where spreading freedom comes in because yeah. uh, <laughs> you can buy uh, the rifle and the pistol for the same amount that would have cost you for that one rifle. Yep. It's, or it's, you can it's, buy a pistol and 10 mags in a bag. <laughs> Valid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and, well, what I called that was uh, when the – you know, when I first saw those deals pop up, I was telling people about them like, hey, this this dagger and AR package, like that's the no excuse pack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you no longer have a oh well, you know, like I can't no, there's no more excuses. This is yeah. this is now <laughs> now wait, hold on, I got a question though. Garth, would that count as one gun for a month yep. if you buy a kit? Yep. Okay. It right. would. That's it. That's okay. it. And I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at the rifle and I'm looking at the uh the uh PSA uh the rock and I'm like, man, solid deal, 750, two guns, but that's uh that's one. Eight, yeah. Okay, um, all right. So <clears> as long as it's as long as it's one skew on the website, it could be classified as one. Yeah, pretty much. Probably I mean, that would think. also work for people who's you know like have to hide it past their wife. Yeah, yeah that too. <laughs> one gun. Oh. Pew pew trucker. Let's do that one. <laughs> the Rock Five Seven is a kick-ass deal too. I think for like four ninety-nine or five ninety-nine comes with what ten magazines, the proprietary magazines. So mm-hmm. don't have to worry about buying those again. I mean, ten magazines, case, and the gun. 
with like the SW, the uh, cut, the cuts on the side, you know, the speed holes, whatever they want to call them. I mean, yep, five, great nine, deal nine, for a five seven. It's six hundred bucks. Thank so you. this is one where uh, it, it's it's off label usage, and I'm sure no one has talked about it. But did you know that uh, Ruger five seven mags will also work? <laughs> not all the time yeah i was gonna say we got it to uh, the one i picked up and did it ran and i was like "Ooh, this is neat yeah. that yeah. was a friend a friend of ours's gun yeah did, <laughs> did you guys did you guys see the deal we ran today no what did you run today I so mean, so we ran a uh we're doing a 101 akm so it's an ak but it's a 556 ak and instead of doing it like the true 101 or a 102 where it has like a 90 degree gas block and a, and a m24 front uh threaded front sight we did it as am pattern and we did it with a half by 28 threads and what we did is we pushed the shoulder back we pushed the front sight back just slightly further so there's a shoulder there for suppressors so you have something to index off of but we ran it for 599. Ooh. Ooh. i didn't even so, see that Dang. Yeah. So, so it was, uh, so we're, you know, obviously, you know, the AK side with the ammo situation between five, four, five ammo, which is like unobtainium now, unless you want to spend like a dollar around, um, or the seven sixty by 39 is drying up fast with the import bands, um, steel case ammo. So it's like, you know, we're focusing on five, five, six and American kind of NATO rounds. So we'll have a 300 blackout as well. Um, but we're trying to get more people into, you know, the AK side. So we wanted to offer something that maybe that AR customer was more like in tuned with, you know, half by 28 threads versus M24 by one and a half, you know, right hand twist, you know. And so that's what we came up with was that was that firearm. And uh, we also have our AK556 mags and probably dropping in about a week because that's the other concern that people have was where do I get mags for it? So now we're going to have our own, you know, mags coming in about a week or so. And so you'll be able to get affordable mags that are really good quality, you know, metal reinforced lips, back, spine, front, everything. Yep, there it is. Cool. Yeah, it Man, sold out. You guys just took up May, June, and July. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, listen, that, that, that is a really fun, fun gun to shoot. You know, I mean, it's a good like gateway drug for people to get into from a from uh, the AR side for five five six ammo and everything. Sure, that looks like a hell of a break on that thing. It's it's actually not that bad. I mean, it really flat. I mean, it's 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 really nice. It's what we put on our five five six. Uh, we call it our arc. So it's our AK ah. that takes um, AR fifteen mags. It's got like a magwell adapter on the bottom of it. And so that's like what came comes with it, and so we just threw it on there. Dang, that that's sharp. I like that. Yeah, you had another safe for sure. <laughs> yep, and uh, no, so like I know that uh, the, you guys have really come a long way on that AK <laughs> side, even though this is the AR podcast. Um, <laughs> it's. Uh, I don't know what we can say more about ARs because at this point, if you don't have one, you're wrong. <laughs> more than one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's might not be a crippling addiction for everyone. Listen, AKs are a crippling addiction. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but stock up. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, uh, when you talked about five, four, five, uh, we have a, uh, a you know former guest and friend of the show who was on and he had uh, a pallet of or he bought three pallets of five four five ammo in like the very early two thousands and he got it for yeah. cheaper than you could buy twenty two long rifle for. Yeah, that, I, I'm so jealous. I'm so mad. Yeah, as well as he's like, I'm yeah, so mad at myself. I you know, he he lived in the Pacific Northwest at the time, and he got it for something like seven cents a round. Oh, it's ridiculous! It's ridiculous. So he's like, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna buy yeah. one of these stupid AK seventy fours and all the ammo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll take the three pallets that you have. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it is a good. I mean, and that's 
you know, part of the reason why, you know, we wanted to start an ammo uh, company and, um, you know, we're going to be tooling up, we're tooling up to make steel case to make it affordable again um, and bring it back into the country and do a, a domestically uh, produced steel case 762 by 39, 545 by 39 and 762 by 54R. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. That, yeah that it is, should be. We're hoping to have it out by by fourth quarter. I mean, it's. I, I'm hoping. I mean, that's the goal. So, when you're doing the steel case, is that going to be a lacquered case as well, or? To be honest with uh, you, I have no idea. Yeah, that's the AAC. The guys who run AAC, they'd be more knowledgeable on that. We can't yeah. speak with authority on that one. Okay, well, that's that's me doing my my nerd out. First. No, you're good. Yeah, I, I'm not 100 percent sure, so I don't want to. I don't want to say yes or no. You know, um, but all I know is is that I'm excited that we will be able to have affordable steel case ammo again, so I can actually shoot my AKs that are in my safe and not feel guilty every time I go to the range. Yeah. Well, I know yeah. that I saw like a screaming deal. AAC had like the cheapest price on 77 grain mm-hmm. I had seen in years. 10.99 a box. Yeah, it and it's awesome. extremely accurate. Yeah, yep. that's the in-house produced stuff. So we use, you know, SNKs um, from Sierra um, on our 77 grains, but we also have our in-house made 77 grains that we're doing. I think we're doing it at like 10.99 a box, which is, you know, unheard of. Yeah, that's that's nuts. A uh, another producer here in South Dakota who produces 77 grain is about triple that cost. So we're not going to mention them because they don't want to come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Black Hills who? I've never heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no. Um, so before we get uh, going too much here, is there anything else you guys want to talk about or start bringing up before we start getting to where we wind everything up? Not, I mean, not really. I mean, yeah, I think we've covered pretty much uh, everything a little bit. Yep, yeah, we got a little bit of everything in there tonight. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Man, I, was... I just can't wait, dude. Like, like I said, I'm I'm gonna be buying PSA for the next three months. I I can't seriously wait until I get my Jackalow. That is a must have. I think I'm gonna turn that into my everyday duty weapon. Julie and I were talking about that earlier. The amount of recoil you don't have on that gun is just so mm-hmm. fantastic, and it's just—it's a smooth shooter, and I just—I can't wait. And actually, you know, my favorite part about that is, it's so customizable. You can even customize your grips, like VZ grips, which are great because they're made from a solid block of G10. G10 is amazing because it's durable and doesn't get slippery when covered with mud, blood, or sweat. They have a 17-degree grip angle. They come in a wide variety of textures from mild to extreme with 27 color options. They also have 1911 grips, CZ grips, along with SIG and revolver grips. The coupon code for all handgun and rifle grips is AR15podcast at vzgrips.com. They do they do make some good stuff. I love their stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. The, this, the amount of texture that he has that he's going to throw on, his, Nick has on one of them, it, it's sandpaper with twigs glued to it. It's disgusting, but for guys like Nick who work with their hands all day and got these bare paws, good for him. I just okay. realized I didn't grab my goddamn grip when we were, when I was there last weekend. Yeah, that's he's correct. Ah. He's so. I've, I have both of yours, and you've both yep. been in my house in the last week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Seven hours of driving. I didn't even grab my grip. Yep. <laughs> mm. Yep. So no, they they are great and they are great people over there as well. Yes, they are. I'm you super know, excited about their uh, their little daggers coming out soon. Are they? Yeah. There are actually. Out yeah, right they're out. They're they're G10 yeah. daggers. Yeah, yeah. I felt uh, I was playing with them at an NRA show, signing the guys there, and playing with some of you know that and some of their uh, grips and stuff they have. Like super nice guys. Oh yeah, great would, people. It's being show, are you guys here. any other shows in the near future? Uh, no, I mean, cause I don't think so. Right. Now we have some local shows that we're doing, not, not shows, but events that we're doing like the AK masters that we do every year and a couple small things locally, but, uh, we don't have anything major coming up until uh shot show next year that I'm aware of. Okay. Yep. Cool. All right. We're we sure some. if you guys are going to be coming to gun con. Uh, unfortunately we couldn't make it to the NRA show or the gathering this year. Yeah. Two of us had, yeah. uh, had uh, military obligations that we couldn't uh, quite sneak out of. 
So yeah. try and make the gathering it. next year if you can. It's a great time. It's yeah. uh, we're doing we're doing CanCon, not the one in Phoenix, but the one in Georgia. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, no, that's one I should talk about. Are you guys bringing back your suppressor line? Oh, it's uh, the AAC suppressors. They well, are that, back. Well, I was yeah, going to say, I don't, I only know this because I, I had one come through a PSA can. Palmetto State. It was, uh, it was from Silencer Shop. It was huh? listed as a Palmetto State Armory Silencer. It may have been a one. I mean, there, there's a couple. There's some other companies in South Carolina who make cans, rugged and innovative arms, but we don't have any PSA suppressors. It's AAC suppressors. Yep, I do that we own. AAC now. This would have been before, like right before. But That's not us. Been, it may have been something else. It was just a, I was like a Palmetto. What? Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> Because I got confused for a second and went, huh? Well, they are making it everything somewhere else. I don't think, yeah, (laughs) they're making it almost everything now. But uh, you know, the one thing they're not making is body armor. Yes, yes. (laughs) Do you want to keep you and your loved ones safe in these uncertain times? Are you looking for a full kit setup or just to upgrade what you already have? Then you need to look at Predator armor, quality American made armor wrapped in Kevlar. Not some cheap junk. From lightweight, flexible backpack armor to full plate carriers with plates. IFAX filled with gear to, or to plug holes. Predator armor has it all. Use code AR15-10 for 10% off. So, uh, well, you guys, uh, does anybody not know how to find Palmetto State Armory? Well, I mean, if they can't, they should definitely check out that little QR code code over that way i think on my screen no that one that way there we go <laughs> yeah Reverse the one that yeah, yeah, yeah. Right the, the one that josiah has to keep like trying to get out of the view <laughs> of. and it's like backwards so i'm like going into it so. <laughs> yeah. well yeah it's like i keep trying to like okay let me adjust where the pictures are and i i can't get it to line up so because it's like the world's worst brady bunch <laughs> there was a if ever you forget, just go to psa.com, it'll redirect you to palmedicinearmory.com. That's an easy yep. way to remember. But uh, no, it's the, the QR code up in the corner will take you through our affiliate link to the page and uh, send that over. So feel free to be using that, guys. And uh, they, when we push through this, uh, so you guys obviously have uh, Instagrams and all the social medias and do the content there. And I believe it's just you know, Palmetto State Armory everywhere. Yep. yep. It is. Yep. Instagram, Facebook. Well, I mean, on Facebook, we have a ton of different ones. We've got our handgun owners group. Cameron, you're on there a lot more than uh, I am on the yeah. Facebook. So I do more of the yeah. forums. What else do we have? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we have a whole bunch of Facebook groups that, you know, I help manage. So we have our Palmetto State Armory AK owners group. We have Palmetto State Armory AR owners group. We have our Palmetto State Armory main page, uh, Palmetto State Armory handgun owners, Palmetto State Armory jack owners. I mean, we have all kinds of groups all over. But if you just Google, you know, type in Facebook Palmetto State Armory, you'll find us. And then uh, we're on Instagram as Palmetto State Armory. And then on Twitter as uh, Palmetto Armory is what we are on Twitter, too. So we got on Twitter now. That's a fun crowd. <laughs> we are not on Reddit, though. We are not on Reddit. Kind of. Yes and no. A little bit. Not like oh, official. A L- little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Uh, so uh, Seth had a question that he put in in the comments. Yep. Uh, are they still using FN barrels on the premium uppers? We, we are. are. Yeah. Yeah. So now, uh, uh, no, you're good. Yeah. So we are, um, a lot of that will probably start transitioning over to our Sabre line, um, as it's more of a, you know, premium AR line anyway. So we're going to probably transition a lot of that over. Now we already started doing that, but we still have our, you know, regular premium, what we call our premium uppers just cause we don't want to confuse our customers. And so, um, but we will have offerings. We have offerings on the Sabre line and FN premium. And then we also have it in our regular AR line as well. Um, but that it'll, it'll start transitioning itself over. Um, we'll still have some options available, but you know, like the 14, five barrels, 
Um, and then the 16 inch mid length barrels, cause I'm a mid length guy. So I've been using all those on the saber line. This one's real fast. It should be easy for well, a couple people. Where's the name come from? We, uh, South Carolina is the Palmetto state. And so we created an armory. So Palmetto state armory, everybody <laughs> thinks we're from uh, Florida, but we're not. That's the sunshine state. We are the Palmetto state. <laughs> yep and uh so we got one more guy just begging for a coupon code <laughs> nah. i mean good on you jim i appreciate what you're doing yeah good thing good thinking jim but my brother likes to offer the best price to everybody so uh it frustrates people but he does not give out coupon codes unfortunately yep you just got to click through that deals page yes yeah. and uh and uh, Seth, you'll go back and listen. Uh, the the HR branding that they have has a bunch of those retro uppers and yep. uh, guns coming through, and they have more of that stuff coming. So, yep, absolutely. Um, with that, is there anything else you guys wanted to touch on quick? I mean, got a lot more. Be on the lookout for AAC. We got a lot of stuff coming out there, especially with the five seven. Um, we've released a couple, a couple loads there. Um, there's going to be people complain a lot about them going out of stock. Uh, we're slowly ramping up production on the five, seven, uh, you're going to see 45 ACP being in stock more, you know, on a regular basis. And you're going to be seeing some new calibers coming out in, in the near future. So really take a look at AAC. Yep. Um, please take a look at, uh, the, and this all falls within, uh, J, uh, it all falls, falls under the JJE corporate companies uh psa is a sister company to ac as well as if you're looking for a good uh, um uh, firearms insurance protection program right to bear sister company they put out a great product but um take a look at them yep. and if you're looking for a good coffee company caliber coffee it's another one yep absolutely no i mean just uh, appreciate y'all's time i mean we got a lot of cool stuff coming out this year um got the crink coming soon hopefully an rpk by the end of the year um i know this is what i saw the eyes there dually <laughs> yes <laughs> yes rp crink in 545 556 300 blackout 762 by 39 rpk in 545 556 762 um by 39 as well so um you know those are coming up on the horizon got a ton of new SKUs constantly being added we got a ton of stuff coming for the saber line we'll have a 308 version of the saber line launching in the summertime as well um, we'll have some guaranteed sub MOA uh, firearms coming in the summertime um, on the Sabre line. So, I mean, we got a lot of a lot of cool little projects coming. The micro daggers coming soon. Um, the slides are out and available now. Um, you know, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have the full firearm out and ready to go. So, um, you know, we got a lot of new handgun stuff coming. Um, yeah, I mean, ammo, I mean, everything. I mean, it's just there's so much stuff to talk about. I mean, there's just every new stuff everywhere. Yep, it's as... If you're not following them, you're wrong. Mm. And uh, it's uh, it's it's awesome. And I've told the uh, Cameron, you should have been in the customer service department. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of do both. So, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, thank you. I appreciate that, sir. Yep. Um, but, uh, no, it's, sure. it is awesome to hear that. And uh, with uh, Saberline getting AR-10 stuff, I might need to get another AR-10 now. Dude, I got some really, really cool. Sh I was gonna say yeah, stuff coming. Oh, you, you really... can. It's fine. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got some really cool shit coming, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went on right. <laughs> it's liberating, ain't it? <laughs> uh. No, so so that'll be we'll I'll definitely be tr keeping track of that just because uh, I I had thought about trying to to build a, a you know M one ten A four clone, but <laughs> <laughs> yes yes there we go, and then uh, we'll talk we'll talk at some point about the proper way to to build a, a civilian PKM, and. <laughs> Then we'll get pushing through on that. But uh, Garth Tyler, you got anything to add tonight? 
No, I really don't, guys. Just uh, appreciate you guys coming on and sharing your time Absolutely. and all your products and stuff. It's great to hear. It's good to see good Americans making good American products. Yeah, 100%. And I actually got to come out to your guys' store about a month ago. That was really cool. You had a great setup out there. And uh, God, I wish I – people around that area are so lucky that they just get to roll into a place like that on a mm -hmm. daily basis. So very we jealous. Appreciate, we appreciate the kind words, sir. Thank you very yeah. much for your business. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Thank you, guys. And we just opened up our Myrtle Beach store. Plug for the Myrtle Beach store. It's a big one. It's our, oh, I believe it's our biggest one so far. Awesome. Yep. It's going to be an awesome museum there, too. Mm -hmm. Ooh, even better. I, yep. I nerd out on history stuff, so. If you nerd out on movie stuff, it's got some cool uh, movie uh, guns in it, too. Oh, man. I, I, yes. <laughs> like a certain Star Wars gun might be there. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. No. So last year at last year at NRA they had Han Solo's blaster and I got to oh. they had it behind glass I couldn't touch it but I was within you don't say I was within where did it where where did it go <laughs> oh. <laughs> where can you go to find it oh. maybe a beach <laughs> <laughs> well boys looks like we're road tripping to Myrtle Beach so yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, well appreciate you guys. Yep, thank you, and uh, you folks out there, you stay safe and stay armed. Do you want to support the show? Subscribe and interact on social media. AR-15 Podcast on Instagram and YouTube. AR-15 Podcast on Facebook. AR-15 Podcast 2.0 at gmail.com if you just want to drop us a line. Find us online at firearmsradio.net. Click through our sponsors and support the people who support our show. Primary Arms, VZ Grips, Predator Armor, Tac Pack, and Patriot Patch Company.